For two decades, the International Space Station has been the crown jewel of human spaceflight. Throughout the years, this microgravity research laboratory and its unbroken string of expedition crews have performed thousands of experiments in areas such as 3D printing, cancer treatment research, material science, human studies, and so much more for the benefit of all of humanity. There are students in college right now that have never known a day where there hasn't been a person living aboard the ISS. For me personally, I was in elementary school when assembly began and in middle school when Expedition 1 started. Looking back over the last two decades, the space station has been a beacon of inspiration, sometimes literally as it would fly overhead, as I grew up and studied in school. I'm sure there are many others with similar stories. But how did this amazing piece of engineering get started and just how much has it improved the lives of everyday people? And what will replace it when it inevitably becomes too dangerous or expensive to maintain? While we head into the title roll, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you can enjoy even more human spaceflight content. Roughly the size of a football field, this $150 billion multinational outpost has been zipping around Earth at 28,000 kilometers per hour orbiting every 90 minutes at an altitude of 400 kilometers. The crews aboard experience 16 sunrises and sunsets each day as they work on science experiments and perform station maintenance. You can often watch them work in real time via live streams on the internet. The station itself can be seen by nearly every person on the planet as it soars overhead as the brightest object in the night sky, save for the moon. While its origins go back farther, Today's ISS was conceived in 1993 when the United States and Russia agreed to merge their space station projects to form a single international outpost. In total, five space agencies representing 15 countries agreed to work together to build, maintain, and service this outpost. Built between 1998 and 2011, the 400 metric ton ISS has over a dozen habitable modules with a living space comparable to that of a five bedroom house. It stretches some 109 meters by 73 meters with its eight massive solar array wings, which produce between 84 and 120 kilowatts of electricity, enough to power more than 40 homes. One, we have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavor with the first American element of the International Space Station uniting our efforts. Assembling the ISS required more than 40 launches, including 36 space shuttle flights and several Russian Proton and Soyuz rockets. Since the year 2000, rotating expeditions of between two and six people have continually occupied the outpost, with seven-person crews expected to begin as early as late 2020. During construction, much of the crew time was spent assembling and maintaining the station. Today, more than 20,000 hours each year are dedicated to science and research activities. As of November 2020, some 240 people from 19 countries have visited the ISS, with many traveling there multiple times. The station was designed to be an orbiting research laboratory, observatory, and factory with the potential to facilitate future missions to deep space destinations like the Moon or Mars. While it's cool to say humans built this amazing structure, allowing multiple countries to work together in space, what is it actually doing to benefit everyday people? Since 1998, more than 2,500 investigations aboard the ISS have generated some 2,100 scientific publications in a wide range of fields with even more spin-off research in non-space industries. Research areas include material science for better manufacturing techniques on Earth, space-based vaccines, remote sensing technologies for disaster response, and many more. For example, advanced water filtration, which is needed for long-duration deep space missions, has led to advancements in purification systems on Earth for places such as Sub-Saharan Africa. Investigations with robotics and haptic feedback techniques are helping to advance telemedicine applications and even make better products for paraplegics. Even everyday clothing stands to benefit from ISS research. Because microgravity changes the way heat and sweat are absorbed into astronaut clothing, high-performance fibers are being tested for comfortability, potentially leading to better textiles for gym use or even extreme conditions on Earth. Like any scientific research, it can be difficult to justify space-based studies because of the amount of time it can take before effects reach the marketplace for a majority of people. However, there are near-term benefits, including the creation of high-tech jobs, as well as the education and inspiration of tens of thousands of youth across the world in pursuit of careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. 
Largely because of the ISS as an orbital destination, the valuation of the space economy has doubled in the last decade, with new customers and companies entering the space market expanding the kinds of research being performed aboard the outpost. NASA has been in the process of commercializing aspects of the ISS since the mid-2000s, by helping with the development of commercial cargo and crew spacecraft to service the outpost. Additionally, commercial research opportunities aboard the station were formed when the ISS U.S. National Lab was established in 2005 with the goal to expand the U.S. economy in space-based research applications and operations. As of 2019, NASA says there are nearly 50 companies conducting research aboard the outpost, with 11 of those installing 14 commercial facilities. Now, with NASA taking aim on the moon, the agency is looking to private companies to take up the bulk of responsibility for low Earth orbit access and research. While government funding for the outpost is currently expected to run through 2024, there is the possibility of extending that into the late 2020s. Regardless, the ISS is closer to its end than its beginning. Add in the outpost's enormous operating costs, nearly $4 billion a year, and it's hard to see the ISS itself becoming commercially operated. It's more likely cheaper private space stations would assume some or all of the capabilities of the current outpost. So in June 2019, NASA announced plans to allocate and sell some of its annual ISS research for private astronauts and even more commercial usage in order to support the development of a sustainable low Earth orbit economy. This is starting with companies utilizing existing facilities with the hope private modules could be added to the outpost in the near future with free-flying platforms orbited soon after to begin transitioning capabilities and assets. The long-term goal is for all ISS capabilities to be handed off to the private sector with NASA purchasing services and access to commercial space stations when and where needed. The International Space Station taught humanity how to assemble and maintain large objects in orbit for long periods of time and is helping us better understand the effects of long-duration spaceflight. The research being conducted aboard stands to improve the lives of millions, if not billions, worldwide. However, its most lasting legacy is likely to be its critical role as a destination for a fledgling commercial space industry as it begins to take over the reins of infrastructure and research in low Earth orbit, allowing governments to focus time and money on deep space exploration projects. What do you think the greatest legacy of the International Space Station will be? Let me know in the comments below. And if I've earned it, it'd mean the world to me if you can subscribe to Orbital Velocity if you haven't done so already, and share this video and others with friends and family. It helps to support the channel and also lets me know what topics you're all interested in in human spaceflight. You can also follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. Additionally, you can visit orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra.